In this three-part series, we're going to explore the fundamentals of programming in Max for Life and take you through the process of making some simple plugins. So what is Max for Life? Well, it's pretty much identical to a piece of software called Max, which is a graphical programming language developed by Cycling74 and enables you to create bespoke software or plugins for a whole range of applications, from simple MIDI devices to sample manipulators through to real-time video processing and much, much more. People typically turn to Macs when they find they're restricted by the capabilities of standard software or synthesizers or want to create more experimental music or digital art. So when using Macs, we have to create a Max patch, which basically consists of a series of boxes known as objects, and these are connected to each other using these virtual cables referred to as patch cords or connections. The words within each of the object boxes determine their function, and there are literally hundreds of different objects to use, but luckily you only need to know a small percentage of these to begin working within Max for Live. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the different objects and message types, as well as some of the user interface objects, and then in the following parts, we'll take you step by step through creating a basic plugin. Max for Live now comes as standard with Ableton Live 9 Suite, but I also recommend you download the additional content available from their site within the packs section. So scrolling down here, then what we can do is choose Max for Live from the types. And we can see here a variety of different Max for Live devices already created, but we've got the Max for Live building tools, Max for Live Plugo and Max for Live Essentials, okay, which I really recommend. But the others are also well worth checking out as well. You can also get an idea for the potential of Max for Live by going to maxforlive.com. And this is where a number of different users have posted their Max for Live plugins. You can download these for free, or you can just browse the site and see what Max for Live is capable of. Once you've downloaded a Max for Live device, then you can just literally drag and drop it onto the appropriate track and it loads that device onto the track. Let me just delete that for now and gonna come over here to Live's browser and click on the Max for Live folder and it displays three main types. So we've got Max Audio Effect, so this is kind of grouped into effects like delays for example. If I open it up then we can see some of the devices included within those packs available from Ableton as well as some tutorial files. Here we've also got Max Instruments, so this is typically triggered via MIDI and will generate sound. And then we've got a Max MIDI effect, so for example, effects like arpeggiators. So these specifically generate MIDI data. So let's open up Max Audio Effect again, and then I'm going to drag and drop the default Max Audio Effect onto this audio track. Now this doesn't particularly look like a conventional device and that's because it's just a default patch as a starting point so we can start building a plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this icon here which is the edit button. I'm going to click on that and Max for Live will now open up saying starting Max editor. And once it's open you'll actually find on your taskbar that the Max application has now loaded. So this is the patcher window. If I just zoom out slightly here and within it we can see a couple of objects so plugin tilde so this little icon uh, which is like a little sine wave is called tilde okay so plugin tilde and plug out tilde and these are connected together by these stripy cables within max there's a few different types of signal Okay, there's kind of data, which is typically uh, represented by a single black line. So if I just create a couple of uh, number boxes here and connect them together, you can see that's a black line. That indicates there's just data flying down that cable. These kind of stripy green lines are signals. Okay, so typically audio signals uh, are traveling down those at whatever sample rate uh, Ableton's been set. So these are kind of two main signals. You've also got jitter as well, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial. In terms of the layout of the Max window, well, we've got down here in the bar at the bottom uh, a lock key, and this allows us to lock or unlock the patch. So if I click with my mouse and try and change this number, you see it only just moves this number box around, and that's because the patch isn't locked. If I now lock the patch, I can then change the number just as I could within Ableton. A quick way to lock the patch is actually to hold down the command key 
and then just click with your mouse in the gray area and that also locks and unlocks. The other useful icon on the bar at the bottom is the preview button. That should be left on and that basically allows you to preview the Max patch within Max without having to save and close down the window and go back to Ableton. Also over here, we've got a sidebar, and this is very useful, as this will show us all available user interface objects and objects and message boxes, basically everything available to us when programming. And we can choose certain categories up here, so user interface objects or Macs, or if you want, you can scroll down. So there's quite a few here. So if we're interested in live, so there's live and Macs for live, Okay, and it's just a question of dragging in. So let's say we wanted a slider. We can just drag on live.gain and drop it into the max window. Also in the max window, you may have noticed this horizontal line here, and that basically represents the size of the screen. You can work horizontally, but you're always restricted by that amount when working within Max for Live. You can still have objects below the line, you just won't be able to see them within the device window. So to start off with, let's just drop a sample into Ableton and press play. And we can hear that. What I'm gonna do is just delete that cable. And now you notice it's only in the left channel. If I delete the cable on the left, it's completely disappeared. So this is the whole principle behind working within Max. You have these objects. Uh, an object with a tilde after it indicates that it works with audio. So this object here, plug-in tilde, basically accepts the incoming audio, and then we can process it in a number of ways before connecting it to the plug-out tilde, and that's what we hear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to patch in this slider. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this object around and connect just by clicking on the outlet into the inlet and from this outlet into this inlet as well. And you notice as I hover my mouse over a certain inlet, it comes up with a comment box explaining what values, what signals it's actually expecting. So to hear this, now we don't have to move uh, our objects to be vertical. You can connect up your cables however you want, but it helps when programmed to keep things nice and neat and tidy. So let's lock the patch, hold down command, click away. Brilliant, so we can now control the gain of the incoming audio signal just with a gain slider. Let's turn that off and press stop. So this is an extremely basic Max for Live device, but it shows you how we can connect different objects to user interface objects to get sound in and out of a device. In part two of this series, we'll check out some specific objects to create and control sound. Every two weeks in the course, uh, an assignment is set. So once I've done my assignment, which is essentially a track, I upload it for my tutor to download and he sends me back a DVR, which is a direct video response. It's a video produced by your tutor um, that is sent to you personally every couple of weeks while you're, you're studying, giving you immediate feedback on your production. It's something that enables the students to have a one-to-one -one connection with their tutor. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. And I think this steel can sound is brilliant. I mean, that's, that's a real kind of hook of the track, this. Maybe let's just try uh, recording something in. The response that the tutor gives is completely tailored to the student's style of music or the level that they're at as well. So it might be nice to spice up this drum track by adding a delay and you can see I've put one here in the return of the drum rack and uh, if we just apply that to the clap now, you see it has a really nice effect. If you want to check out the whole range of online courses, go to pointblankonline.net.